it might actually break as we get in to the Sacramento Kings and whether or not they have a a wing problem. So what led me to have this conversation is when Brendan Nunes, our Sacktown Sports Kings insider, he posted, and this is no slight, right? This is a good team that he was on, but it does speak to a, a larger issue. This is Trey Lyles, his stats with Team Canada. Again, Team Canada is a good team. They have Jamal Murray. They have Dylan Brooks. They obviously have Shea Gilgis alexander They have R.J. Barrett. The list goes on and on. He played 14 minutes against Greece, scored zero points, 0 for 2 from the field, three rebounds, one assist. In Australia, against Australia, he played seven minutes with three points, one for three, one assist. Versus Spain, 11 minutes, three points, one field goal, one rebound, one assist. Versus France, 12 minutes, two points, 0 for 2, three rebounds. Total in the Olympics, Trey Lyles had eight points in 44 minutes. And he was two for 11 from field goal and one for four from three pointer. And Trey Lyles, ladies and gentlemen, that is your, that's your backup wing, right? When you look at this Kings roster, you don't have Harrison Barnes anymore. Everybody wanted to move on from Harrison Barnes and that's fine, but your wing depth is a problem. And we can hear Monty McNair and he can come on these airwaves and he can tell us that they know that there is somewhat of an imbalance. But what are you doing about it? Nobody is saying to go out and, and 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 overpay for a player. We'll get into that as well as marketing is off the table. What do you think these other teams are going to do? Everybody, now what I saw yesterday, that the Warriors are not interested in Cam Johnson and Dorian Finney-Smith. And the Lakers, are. everybody's interested in those two players. Because Brandon Ingram seems like he's going to stay in New Orleans at least for the, at least until the trade deadline, all right? And you look around, and okay, you bring in Isaiah Crawford. We get it. We we like what we see. Isaiah Crawford was on these airwaves yesterday. But besides that, you have, like we said, DeMar DeRozan, okay? And you have Trey Lyles. I'm literally looking for other wings. And Jalen McDaniels. Jalen McDaniels. Welcome to Sacramento. That's it. Who we don't even know if Jalen McDaniels has ever stepped foot into. Has anybody heard anything about Jalen McDaniels? There's been no intro presser. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. We had him in studio. No, 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 no. Jordan, Jordan, that was Jordan McLaughlin. Oh, my bad. That was Jordan McLaughlin. I don't get, I got getting scared here. Now, now I'm going to like, now I'm freaking out. Jordan McLaughlin was here in studio. Go check that out on YouTube if you haven't seen it. But Jalen McDaniels, and even if he had, and even if he he is in the building, nobody knows what he's expected to do. Monty McNair barely spoke about him. All right, so so as far as I know, you have two fours that you can play. Two. And let's be honest, DeMar DeRozan, to me, I, he can play a two, uh-huh. but he's not a two, right? I could hit three in my lineup, but I'm not really a three hitter. Okay, so what is the plan for the Sacramento Kings and this wing situation? We talked about some of the free agents yesterday, and they can sit here and and tell us that there is a problem and that they're trying to fix it. But we're going to look in a couple in a couple weeks, and this whole thing is going to is going to get going pretty quickly here. So I'm not really sure what exactly the Kings plan is. And I know I'm going to hate on NBA.com and their power ranking, but at the same time, you understand where they're coming from because there is an imbalance. So I do wonder, do the Kings actually think they have a forward problem? Do they think they can get away with DeMar DeRozan and one Trey Lyles at that four position and that's enough? And obviously, you had to move on from Harrison Barnes. I mean, that that was clear. But I don't know how they're going to find somebody else when everybody that has been talked about, whether it's Jeremy Grant or whoever, oh, well, that's an overpay. Okay, well, now everyone who is not an overpay, now all of a sudden, everybody's interested in them. The Jazz, who decided to keep Lori Markin in, now all of a sudden, they're going to turn into buyers. I saw a report that they were interested in Brandon Ingram. So... 
as the market continues to change and you look at what this lineup is and you had Monty McNair on these airwaves tell Jason Ross that we're that this is the core that we're we're going we're going into to battle with into training camp with what do you do what do you do do they actually think that they have a wing problem i think they do i think that this is what's going to happen next and this continues to happen it, it's just, it's just a round robin situation okay all these teams they're not going to want to budge all right i actually don't think that there's going to be another quote unquote big move made because oh if I'm the Nets, oh, you want Cam Johnson? You want Dorian Finney-Smith? I guess we're back to a, a first-rounder, maybe a first-rounder and a young talent, all right? So they're going to up the price again. The Kings, the Warriors, the Lakers, all these teams are going to say, actually, we're going to stay away. We don't want to pay that much. And what's going to happen at the trade deadline? The same exact thing. The only hope is that there's some teams – call it the the Cleveland Cavaliers or whoever you want, who, who's going to have a Jared Allen that's available, even though you got to pay him because he just signed that extension. You're going to run into the same issue again. And this is what I talked about towards the end of last week. You have to figure out a way, and nobody's saying to sell the farm, but I don't see how in a, they say it's a wing-driven league. You're in a wing-driven league now, and the weakest position that the Kings have is the wings. And maybe you could, maybe somebody would argue the centers with Sabonis and Alex Lynn, but Sabonis, I just think having Sabonis in the fold, you're never going to think of that as a weak position. Now, if he got injured, that'd be a problem. But if anybody's best player or second best player got injured, that would be a problem. But I, I do believe the Kings think they have a wing problem. I just feel like there are too many teams that have the same exact thought process and nobody's going to want to overpay for Cam Johnson and nobody's going to want to overpay for Jeremy Grant. And we're all going to wait until the trade deadline and the teams are going to do the same exact thing. Why would they ever have to come down on their price tag? It's, it's supply and demand. If there is always a demand, why would a team say, you know what? Yeah. Just give us two seconds for Cam Johnson. And, and I don't know, Keon Ellis or somebody like that. Why would they do that? When they have other teams, I mean, everybody saw what the Golden State Warriors allegedly were willing to give up for Laurie Market and not Brandon Pajemski, but allegedly what they were willing to give up. So now that it, it, it's, Simone, it's, you ever been at a restaurant and you go to tip somebody, yeah. but you accidentally pull out a bigger bill <laughs> and then you feel like you just got to give them what was there, right? I was only going to give you a five but I accidentally pulled out the 10 would just take the 10 anyway, because he <laughs> saw done that. Well, cause he saw that I have a 10 and that's I'm what it is. Them now. Whatever the 20% is plus a little extra. If they did a good job, no, I'm not doing I'm saying, it out of guilt, but he saw me, <laughs> Pressure. he saw me. So I'm going to just give him the 10. Everybody knows what the warriors are willing to give up. So why would the Nets say, actually, we're going to lower our price tag when there's now more teams in two days, yeah. in two days, the warriors have, essentially entered the chat of the right. Cam Johnson's of the world because Laurie Markkinen's gone. Yep. Okay. And you have the Jazz entering the chat because Laurie Markkinen stayed. That's two more teams that the, that the Kings are going up against. That's two more teams. So do I think that the Kings think they have a wing problem? Yes, I do. But I don't think that they believe it's to the point where they need to overpay and we're just going to keep this cycle going unless some random teams that are expected to play well just end up tanking. And they have to be old enough. They can't even be young talent because why would you move off a young talent? Three for Madness coming up next. Three sports questions Simone will ask and we will get into. Carmichael Day Show with Jason Ross, Alan Siles filling in. The only place you'll find King and Murray is Sacktown Sports.